Hello, my name is Alejandro Sandoval, and this is the Solo Negocios video blog with the Solo Negocios bulletin summary for June 26, 2018. And again, again, and for the eighth time in a row, the Mexican peso got appreciated. Again, also a little bit compared to the losses in the last two months. But the truth is that the Mexican peso, or today in the interbank exchange, went down from the 20 pesos per dollar psychological uh, threshold and basically we are in a good trend even a few days before the presidential election showing in a great manner that it's implicit the potential uh, winning of the leftist party and the leftist candidate Andres Manuel López Obrador and also showing that most of the influence in the change rate is not local but mostly external elements beginning in the set in the volatile set with the normalization of the federal rate reserve rate as well as other elements like oil prices the trade war and the deals with nafta among other elements well let's begin with the different elements for today banco de mexico made a statement today by one of its main uh, directors saying that he has seen that in the whole campaign for the electoral process that we are living in Mexico, Mr. López Obrador has been ahead in surveys. And this implies that markets have already discounted his triumph. This doesn't mean that they're giving like a, a handshake and, and welcome him because they want to see his exercise in power, which will begin until December the 1st, 2018. And the real um, application of of policies will begin maybe until 2020. Why? Because 2019 will be an inertial year uh, regarding the budget, which has been begun to be prepared by the current government, will be negotiated more or less during the next Congress that we have beginning in September the 1st, this uh, 2018. But the president, the new president, will enter into power until December the 1st. So they won't have much of a chance to negotiate that budget and they will have a, an inertial one for the following year. So it won't be until 2020 when we see actual policies from that part. But the truth in, in, in this uh, like context is that in, in the beginning, it seems that the market already discounted the presence of this leftist uh, candidate into the Mexican presidency. Now, that said, if he doesn't win, and some of the other of the candidates, maybe Ricardo Anaya, who is seems to be the second uh, with a chance to win the presidency, well, the markets will discount already that part. It will get like a, a space for speculation and the opportunity to get winnings from that situation over this close to 2020 per dollar. But the truth is that there are other elements influencing. Oil went up today because uh, the US is pressing or is influencing his allies to begin uh, applying the sanctions against Iran for the nuclear issues uh, at the beginning of November this year. And then if, that, if, if the United States wins this process of influential uh, debates, then we will see that the OPEC decision last Friday won't be that much hurtful to the markets and prices will keep going up. So more or less that's the interpretation of the market. Also, the Bloomberg Dollar Sport Index increased today after like four days in a row going down to 0.33%, but did, this didn't like affect the Mexican peso. And this was due to mixed uh, indicators. Consumer confidence went up, but a little bit under what it was expected. And the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index went up over expectations. Bank of Mexico's exchange hedges today went down in volatility. They were 2.82% times the $300 million demand for 59 days. And also there's information along the trade war uh, of the United States. Uh, today, President Trump stated that he is mandating, is uh, making this investigation with his Secretary of Commerce and his cabinet to uh, analyze the imposition of tariffs against auto imports from Europe specifically along the declaration last Friday to impose sanctions against China companies specifically, but in general terms, companies uh, from foreign countries to 
participate in uh, investments in the United States where technology is uh, existing, is applied or something, because they fear that it's being stole, stolen from them. From them. So that's weird because, I mean, in general terms, prohibit investments will diminish the opportunity to increase uh, the superavit that is expected by the foreign trade balance that here is constantly replying or attacking. Also, uh, there is property right laws and other type of uh, actions and reactions that could take place to diminish this scenario. But well, they're doing precisely issues that could put in risk the self-economy of the United States. So that's basically the information today. We'll have more information tomorrow and we'll keep, we'll keep in touch. Thank you very much for your attention.